universal in every culture, either do unto others they undo, or don't do unto others as you wouldn't want to have them do to you, and what game theorists have formalized in ways of how do you maximize play to maximize cooperation, and what you see is the most efficient strategies often are built around golden rule type interactions, tit for tat, you can show mathematically in terms of these games like the prisoner's dilemma, what you have most efficaciously is you begin by cooperating. If the other individual cooperates, you continue to cooperate. If they cheat against you, the next time you cheat in return, if they've gone back to cooperating, you do as well. You do a tit-for-tat strategy, and this is something, the mathematics of this is studied by game theorists and economists and war strategy people and all of that, and it's all built around we are rational enough to come up with ways of maximizing different strategies. But then it turns out we're not the only species that does tit for tat. First example, here we have this terrifying, nightmarish creature, the vampire bat haunts our nightmares. The vampire bat in actuality, when it's out drinking the blood of something or other, is actually a female just getting food for her babies, because vampire bats aren't actually drinking the blood, they're storing it in a throat sack, they fly back to their nest, discord the blood to feed their babies. Now here's the interesting thing which is that vampire bats have communal nests. A whole bunch of different females have their infants in there, and the females come back and disgorge the blood and feed everybody's kids. Everybody is feeding everybody else's kids. It's a system of stable reciprocity. Now make the bats think that one of them is cheating on them. One of them is holding back. Bat flies out, and you net the bat, bring it down, and what you do is you pump up the throat sac with air so that the throat sac is extended way out and gorged, and you push the bat back into the nest there, and everybody is sitting there saying, oh, my God, look at how much blood she's got there, and she's not feeding my kid. And the next time around, nobody feeds her child. They do a tit-for-tat strategy. Even more amazing example, in part because of the species having so few neurons, here we leave mammals behind, and talking about fish. Fish, classic research with stickleback fish. Okay, make a stickleback fish believe that its territory is being invaded. What do you do? You put a mirror up against the side of its tank, and within seconds, it's attacking its image there. Now, you make the fish believe it has a coalitional partner. Here's what you do. You take a second mirror and put it perpendicular to him, and now what's happening is every time he's lunging forward, his reflection is doing it there, and he's saying, I have no idea who that guy is, but he's great because every time he's keeping the other guy out there, and this is great. We've got this stable partnership, yay team. Now, now make the fish think his partner is cheating in their social contract. Take the mirror and angle it back a bit so the image is deflected backward. So now he's sitting and he's going at his image there and he sees the guy moving forward, but he sees the guy's not moving forward that much. And he's sitting there saying, that bastard, I can't believe it. Here we are, I'm blistering my lips here against this guy's lips. That's kind of weird the way that works, but I'm defending the trade. Oh yeah, he's just pretending to go forward, but I see he's not going all the way there. He believes his partner has cheated on him, and the next time he sees his image, he doesn't attack it. He's tit for tatting back. So we are not the only species that is capable of doing that sort of optimization. What is unique about us